Hey y'all, it's Josh with Ernest Roots. Uh, today on this video, we're gonna be talking about the hoop shelter build. Uh, this is a project that we have been wanting to do for probably two and a half, three years now. And we're pretty excited about it. Uh, done a lot of homework on this build. Um, it will be increasing our, our, our bird capacity from 100 birds to 300 birds. We currently run the John Shoskovic styles uh, if you don't know what they, those are, I'm going to show a picture now. Uh, those shelters have been pretty good for us. We've used them for five years. And at, at a small scale, just starting out, that's the way to go. Um, so John, John, we met him in 2017, or I mean 2018 at the APA conference. Learned about those shelters, came back, bought his book, and built them. We've been really impressed with them, but now we're trying to scale up. So we're going, going with a bigger build, um, bigger shelter. Also in 2018, we learned about uh, Dave and Ginger Shields uh, design from, of, from Pasture Life Farms in Florida. Uh, we really liked that design then, but our scale just didn't justify it uh, going that big. Uh, now it does, uh, five years later. Um, so I've really done my homework on this. Been planning for it for about two and a half years now. Uh, I've, I've watched every video I possibly can of different variations of the hoop shelter build. Dave has an article from in APA, from APA magazine. I've read this. This is pretty much gonna be my go-to for this build. Back in December, we went to Dave and Ginger's farm uh, in Florida. Got to see it firsthand. And at the APA conference last week, I got to pick Dave's brain. Dave wasn't at his farm when we were there touring uh, back in December. After conference, I got to pick his brain. So he's been, him and Ginger both have been very helpful with this, uh, this, this goal here of ours. And then also at the APA conference, I met uh, Matt Cadman and he, he, I asked him a bunch of questions and he's been very, was very helpful with this as well. So shout out to them. Uh, thanks for that. So y'all uh, just stay tuned for this video. I'm gonna show clips of the process, explain some things, maybe talk about the material used, give a list of that here. Uh, so stay tuned y'all, check it out. So we're out here, uh, gotta start bending the pipe for the hoop house. Um, the reason why I got two benders is this is the first bender we bought. It is a 14 foot hoop bender. We, a week or so ago, we, we started this process of bending these and the table we had this mounted to, it broke through the torsion of us trying to bend the pipe. Show the pipe right over there. So that was our first one. In that process, it broke the table. So it brought us back to the drawing board. And also during that, it kind of clicked in, the, in, our, in our heads to measure our gates. Well, all of our gates ended up being 14 foot. So a 14 foot hoop house would not fit through the gate. We ended up having to buy a 12 foot hoop bender. And we bought the hitch attachment that goes with it. So maybe this will be a lot better, we're about to find out. In about an hour, we got seven hoops done. Uh, we may be doing a couple more, one or two more. And I'll touch base on that later. Uh, but something I'll make note of, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, is on each piece, on each 11 foot piece, we wrote, we wrote a B and a T on each end. And as we were bending these, I had, Kylie had the B facing up, I had the T facing up, and that helped keep these from uh, being spindly. 
first couple were a little spindly, but we got a little better as we went on down the line. So that's it. Next step. I'm cutting some uh, tube stock here. I think it's one inch. And in, in six inch sections. And this is gonna be welded to the four inch tubing, which is gonna be the skids. The bottom frame, so we weld it up. The hoops are going to slide down like, like that. So I'm cutting, I got seven hoops, so I need 14 of these. I'm possibly going to need two more hoops, and I'll talk about that later. So I might need additional four of these. So I'm going to cut some more. So I got a uh, bucket here full of uh, six inch nibbles. I went ahead and cut four extra just in case I decided to do the two other hoops. If I don't use them now, I'll use them on the next build. So no biggie there. What I'm considering doing is drilling a hole in this pipe, this round tubing, and then drilling a hole in here and put a bolt through just to secure it. Um, they said on their shelters they put he puts a screw in he uses galvanized tubing i believe i'm not sure how well that's going to work on this because i use some very thick round tubing here that's all i can find so i don't know we'll see i'm uh, learning as i go might do some uh, improvising here and there uh so that's it on that step on to the next so i got the 24 foot four and a half inch tube stock laid out Kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. I got the six inch nipples on there and I have put nine of them on there. The uh, Pasture Life's design has seven. Why am I going to have nine? I'm about to explain that. And why I'll be cutting this pipe into three, sec three eight foot sections. All right, so why are we cutting that 24 foot section of pipe, the skids? into eight foot sections. Our property has is, is got terraces on it. It's, it's hilly. If we left it solid, one whole piece of 24 foot, whenever we cross a hill, let's say, let's say this would be a hill, that structure, that ain't gonna make sense. Here we go, here's a hill. If we left this 24 foot, it will come out here, it may bend, it may break or it also may leave a gap right here where chickens can get out or predators get in. So we need flexibility in the, the Z axis, but rigidity in the X and Y axis. So X and Y has to be rigid so it doesn't fall apart when we pull it. We need flexibility in the Z. I got uh, something drawn here. I'm gonna flip it around and show you. So, X, Y, Z. The base of the structure has to be rigid. This is gonna be the 24 foot by 12 foot. The Z axis, we have to have flexibility up and down because of the hilly terrain. So if we left it rigid, that's what it would do. We need to do something like that. Eight foot, eight foot, eight foot. Have some flexibility in it. At the conference last week, I discussed this issue with uh, Matt Cadman and Dave Shields, and they had a lot of good advice for me. And the conclusion is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut those terraces back some so it's not so sharp crossing them perpendicular. I'm still designed for flexibility, uh, but I'm gonna create a bridge, so to speak. Because we're gonna be running our, sh our tractor parallel with those terraces, but eventually we gotta cross them. So we're gonna cut back two or three of them. And that's the plan so far, and we'll see what happens. I mean, again, this is the first one we've done, so we'll see. All right, we have cut the metal for the base. We got two 12 foot pieces, which is gonna be the front and the back. And then we got three eight foot pieces for one side and three eight foot pieces for the other side, which will be a total of 24, so 12 by 24. 
And then we got this uh, eight inch piece of tubing. How we going, the, the way we're going to join these together is like this. We're gonna drill a hole in it, drill a hole here and, and here, and we're gonna bolt them together. And when they're bolted, we have it one on the other end too. That'll give some flexibility in the, in the Z axis. On to the next step, we will be drilling some holes and a lot of them. So today is February 13th and we have completed one skid. Uh, it's 24 foot long and as mentioned in the previous clip we needed that flexibility in the z-axis and we got flexibility in the z-axis. Look at this. Join the pieces together. I gotta get some smaller bolts. I got five inch and I should have got three inch. Uh, I'll replace these. Got some wiggle room this way and up and down. So I'm pretty impressed with it. On to the next one. We got both skids done and these are just laid up here for right now. We'll have to attach them and then we've got to put um, something on the ends, like a ramp so we, this doesn't catch dirt. Um, while it's being pulled for the washer. Right now Josh is working on drilling the holes for the pieces that are going to be welded on the rails and then They'll be welded up like this, and then the um, hoops, right? Yeah. The hoops will go onto them. We'll have to kind of figure out some way to attach them so the wind doesn't doesn't take it off or anything like that. But that's it's too long. It's just little things here and there. So today is uh, March third and we are finally beginning the welding process. So I got it laid out here and I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of show you what I got in mind. I got the nipples on, set up there right now as a visual. And this, I got it where it's gonna take apart in thirds. So this third will pretty much stay together. It's got three hoops on it. This middle section only got one hoop on it. And then this section's got three hoops on it. So I'm gonna try to make it where this is flexible. It's gonna be a two by six. It's gonna be screwed to the hoop where the wiggle wire is gonna go. It's gonna hold the tarp on it. So I'm still pondering how I'm exactly gonna do that. I'm just gonna roll with it. So this, these will go on here in a 12 foot piece. Um, it's gonna, I think it's going to be kind of tricky I'm going to want to weld them to get that hole right there lined up with the top rail so we'll figure that out down the road this is what I'm going to show right here these brackets these are some heavy duty chair brackets I'm going to weld them on the bottom and I'll probably put some braces on it here to cap that off for several reasons, when we're pulling it, this will be rounded. It won't drag as much. I was gonna do an arm at an angle, but came across these, so I'm gonna give them a shot. And then also, we're gonna try pulling it using this, these holes, got two on this end and two on the other end down there. If that doesn't work, we'll come up with another way to pull it. And we, or we could use these holes to put something like an eye bolt where we can put electrical wire around it for predator protection. So, gonna see what happens. About to start welding.
So I'm calling that a wrap up for tonight. I got uh, four more of these nipples to weld on, on the ends, on the 12 foot pieces, and then two of the L bracket arms. Uh, so I'm gonna call that a night. Uh, two lessons learned. One, the helmet battery possibly died somewhere in the process of welding. My eyes hurt and my face is red as you can see. And don't put the phone near the welding. If it's too close, your screen will melt. Yeah, yeah, I got little welt melting spots all over my phone screen right now. Lesson learned. Today is March 17th, and I was able to find time to get back on this project. And we usually get on this project when it rains because you can't do nothing else. Um, you, you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you'll see we got tons of stuff going on right now. It's crazy. Um, but got back on this. I drilled some holes. I still got one more to do. Uh, this is the 12-footer. I got the other 12-footer to, to drill. But what I did was I drilled holes every one foot. And that's going to be where the conveyor belt mounts. And you'll see that later on in the video. But the conveyor belt will help keep chickens from getting out. That's the idea. So, gonna get back at it. Next step. So today is uh, March 27th, and we got this section done. 12 foot pieces welded on. Now we gotta move this one out, and weld the next piece up, and assemble the frame. And the welding is finally done. And it'll be on to assembling the hoops on it. So we're getting there, slowly but surely. We're still in gusses. So it is May 7th. We got the tractor out here yesterday on pasture. Got it put together the hoops on it. Still got to finish the tops, work on the purlings. Uh, I got like three or four weeks before I got to have this done and 300 chickens are going in it. So we are on a time crunch. So this has been a long drawn out project because of all the other hundred of projects we got going on. We're getting there. So today is May uh, 20th and we're working on the purlings finally. And we're getting the middle one set with four foot spacing between each, each uh, hoop. And then once we get it in place, we're gonna do two more on each side. One on this side, one more on each side. So we got all three purlings up. Now we're about to start working on the sides. We're putting a screw in each hoop to hold them in place. Got the sideboards up on this side. About to put the wire up. We still gotta complete that side right out of brackets. So now we're done with the sides. Got them wired up. About to put the uh, wiggle wire channel up now. This aluminum stuff right here. And we'll show you how that works in a little bit. We're actually gonna figure it out too. So next step, that. Got the seat channel up. This is how it's gonna work. The billboard tarp's gonna lap over this, and then we're gonna have to get this wiggle wire in this channel to hold the billboard tarp tight. All the way down. On the other side, this is gonna be the hard part. Get the seat channel screwed to this hoop on both sides. That's the next step. So the day's May 27th, and I'm out here working on the ends of the shelter while Kylie and the kids are out in the hay field. And I've got one side up. I'm about to move on to the other side. And I'm gonna show you what I've done thus far. Uh, I'm not really filming uh, by myself. And quite honestly, I'm ready to be done with this. Got a time crunch and a lot of irons building in the fire. So sometimes you gotta keep your head down and just work. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I got about a 40 inch opening here for the gate and I'll do the exact same thing on the other end. And about two foot up, I put a little cross beam there. That's mainly to uh, help keep cows from busting through. I may put another one. 
if I got enough brackets. And next we'll be putting uh, the six foot high wire on it. Got this conveyor belt here from a hay beller and uh, I'm gonna use it as a skirt. Got about a four inch gap at the bottom. So we're gonna use it to try to keep the chickens from getting out. We just got the roof completed, uh, put the billboard tarp on, and that went fairly smoothly. Now the next step is hooking up the water supply and getting feeders. We we'll used some PVC and screwed to the billboard tarp and the rivets and rolled it up. And then it's being held up in the middle with the T-post ties on both sides. Pretty impressed with the water system. Giving a little visual of it. Got five Plasian waters. That's working great. Got a little bit of leakage where we got the pipe connecting. Like right here is leaking some. It's leaking into that, so really no biggie. I'll probably fix it later. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole and put Teflon tape around the tubing, stuck it in the hole, and then electric taped it. Kind of hold it in. And it's working pretty good on four of the five. Got the feeders hanging. I think there's 11 of them in here. Got one that's gonna have grit in it. The string, I need to replace it and get something with better tensile strength because it's, it's sagging once I put feed in it. Today is June 10th and we are about to haul the brooder over here and put the chicks in this. That's a wrap, folks.